Hello, this is going to be a video explaining what I call the Nanman Vassal Exploit or Vassal Farm or whatever you want to call it. So the basic premise of this is, as you can see, this is my Sushia campaign. We're on turn 70, so it's quite late in the campaign. We've just triggered the Three Kingdoms period, so the, uh, the map is pretty messy. I've sort of sold a lot of territories from factions I've been annexing uh, to factions like Yuan Xiao. So he's a... Uh, <coughs> oh, Yuan Xiao's over here. Yuan Shu as well. I've made him nice and big, so I uh, want to have some big, nice uh, late game enemies. But I've destroyed most of the Nanmum factions. I've been confederating them, sorry, not confederating them, I've been vassalizing them, and then when I get sick of them, I occupy them as well. And as long as I've got one of the Nunmuns still as one of my vassals, they uh, get the fealty of all the other factions that have been destroyed. So I've got three Nunmuns at the moment that are my vassal slaves, but I just attack every turn and uh, revassalize them uh, every turn as well. And the reason we can do this is because we are at an alliance war with them. So we're in an alliance and have been in an alliance for a good long while with uh, my little warmonger friend uh, Zong Yan, as you can see here. So he's got a good personality for it, so he likes attacking people. As you can see, he prefers solving problems by direct conflict rather than by words, which is useful for us, which pretty means we can uh, make an alliance war with anyone he doesn't like pretty easily. So all the nun month before I went to war with them, I declared an alliance war and then destroyed <coughs> and captured all their territory until their final settlement and therefore attacked their final settlement and then we can do this over and over again so I'll show you here in all directions. so this is one of the armies that have been farming up quite significantly and we've been doing this for probably about 40 turns so we've been doing it with Sun Tzu, Yan Yu and then usually with Zortai but he's level 10 at the moment so we're just training up uh, his brother Sun Tzu's brother Celebrate. In just order resolve, you can fight these battles. I fight them primarily, uh, especially when I train up generals, because I just use the generals. Because I'm under the impression that you get more experience doing that, but uh, if you can get most of the generals kills, but I'm not they quite sure on that one. But then, because we go to the vassalized uh, option, and now we're still at war with them, so next turn they're going to respawn their garrison. Alongside, they may recruit armies as well. So they might have between about 1,500 to 2,000 units next turn because they're quite high replenishment because they're Nanman. Uh, they get through reforms and characters and all those sort of bonuses as well. And then next turn we just simply attack them again. You can do this over and over again with Nunmuns that are reduced to just one faction, uh, sorry, one territory that you can vassalize. So a good way of sort of building the experience on characters alongside unlocking titles. And probably most importantly, boosting your respectability rating. So as you can see, we're at 241 respectability. So even though we've been annexing people, doing diplomatic ultimatums and declaring war uh, shortly after signing peace, we've been supporting our allies in war and then fighting against the enemies of the alliance because they're always out alongside their, our vassals, they're also our alliance enemies as well. <clears throat> and because we're uh, vassalized, uh, we can actually get them to declare war on other factions so they operate as usual vassals but alongside their in an alliance war with us as well. So a little bit of a bonus there, so they're not going to be at war with each other, they're just at war with us as the primary uh, person in the alliance. I could always get them to declare a war on each other, but you get the negative sort of bonus. Uh, I think I'll show you. So where are you? So they're not actually a part of our alliance, but they are a vassal. So if I wanted to call him to arms, oh it works. Oh, that's funny. Oh, no, there we go. So you have to defend them now uh, is a problem, or we could release them. As you wish. And they're independent now. But we're still in an alliance war with them, so we could just attack them again next turn, which I'll show you. Oh, we could do it this turn, actually. And just vassalize them again. So there's no benefit of doing that, particularly. But uh, you can do it. But I wonder if they're still at war. No, so they're not at war anymore. So there's no real benefit doing that. <laughs> but uh, you can do it, so <laughs> interesting. But then same with uh, this person over here, this Nunmun character. I can't really pronounce these names, so I'm not going to try. Because I've got our main armies here. They've been sort of fighting our wars, but now brought them over to Nunmun territory. Just nice little war resolve. Vassalize them again. And... They're still our vassal, so we can do it again next turn. Nice little level up on Gojai. 
And I've been doing this system to actually capture a lot of Naaman characters as well. So you can see this gentleman here, I think, is Menhu's brother. We captured quite a while ago. Um, but he's got Tiger Slingers and Tiger Warriors alongside a lot of the other char uh, characters we've captured from Menhu as well. We've got in our faction. Uh, we've got Mulu somewhere as well. But all these sort of Naaman characters here are people we've captured from uh, either Mulu or the other Naaman's. A lot of them I've been executing, but I've been keeping a lot of them if they have good units like the Nanzong Elephants. I don't think, yeah, he's got nothing in particular, I just didn't want to kill him because he's a unique character. Same with this gentleman here, just didn't feel like killing him, but he's a family member, I think we married him in at some point in time. She's just a woman we married, but I thought she got interesting. Uh, <clears throat> she had interesting stats, and he's another of the unique Nanman that uh, has nothing particularly special. He's got Unbreakable though, which is, makes him somewhat useful. But on this playthrough we have adopted and married and pretty much got every character so it's a bit of a bit of the Pokemon as you can find in usual Three Kingdoms where we've adopted a lot of women and then we marry pretty much all the gentlemen we can. Uh, so we get all the best characters. So this is Lady Zhurong's brother who's someone we captured through war. Uh, through Meng Ho I think so he's one of the better none main characters you can get because he's got this really interesting unique mace. This is someone else we captured as well. Yeah, he's got elephants and tiger warriors. So these are, if I think you can get some really interesting general combinations because you've got these really interesting generals you can use uh, alongside different units, alongside the um, the usual sort of negatives you have with the Nunmun in terms of they have limited aspects when it comes to siege. The siege is pretty much just elephants. So uh, because we're Han, uh, we're Sushe, uh it allows us to use good Nunmun units alongside usual Han people with even Annex Lube, which I kind of reject, regret at the moment. I probably shouldn't have done that, but um, that's alright. It annoys me now that um, Gonzazan is one of the Three Kingdoms, because I was hoping to annex him and get his weapon and have another cool character in the court. But we've leveled up most of our characters, not all of them, but quite a few of them have you know, reached pretty high levels. These are just the ones we primarily use on the battlefield, like Machao, even um, uh, Lubiero's uh, son. We marry him on pretty much turn one. Uh, Sushe, Sun Shen, uh, Sun Jin, we captured him through war as well. Guan Yu, Zhong Fei, blah blah blah. So quite a lot of characters that we get. So the reason you do this alongside capturing weapons and experience, of course, is the respectability. But you can just get some really interesting units because every turn there's going to be a new generation of Nunmun units that the Nunmun factions get. So you can get some interesting characters, characters that have stubborn, that gives them unbreakable, uh, characters that are brilliant because they're confederated. Uh, a lot of these people have the confederation of uh, Mulu as well because he got confederated by one of the other Numbun factions. I can't actually show it at the moment because I killed them all. But all these people, because Mulu at one point in time was our vassal until he got confederated by Meng Ho accidentally. Well, we captured Mulu back anyway, but we've got his elephant, and we've had his elephant for a long while now. And we use him on Zortai, because if you want to have uh, pretty much the most overpowered character in the game, someone who can't die, alongside being on the most uh, overpowered item in the game in terms of the elephants, uh, Zortai is the person to do it, because he's got unbreakable vow, so when you've got someone who's oathsworn in the same battle as him, he's unbreakable alongside fatigue immune, and he regenerates health, so he's a pretty crazy character to have. And he's level 10, as you can see why, because he... Uh, has killed thousands upon thousands of people during this campaign. But yeah, I've been able to manipulate this campaign quite substantially to sort of best suit my needs because you have the respectability bonus. I was able to confederate and annex a lot of factions as well. Alongside manipulating the map how I sort of choose because I think one of the big sort of criticisms you can find with Three Kingdoms in the late game is the factions aren't going to be overly aggressive to each other even in the Three Kingdom period, like the like he's just at war with Sao Sao, who he has been with a lot of the game. Sao Sao's just been taking a beating from everyone, really, including myself, and he's just at war with Yellow Turbans and Mongho, so... Uh, Yuan Xiao is not particularly aggressive, alongside Gon Suzan, who's here at war with Dong Mi, who's someone I gave. Uh, so this is um, Dong Zhuo's brother, who's... The reason we're sort of in this position, actually, while we've got characters like um, uh, Lu Bei... Uh, sort of Lu Bei, uh, Lu Bu and Zong, uh, Zhong Liao is because if you marry Dong Mei on turn one, when Dong Zhuo dies, the person who takes over is Lady Dong, his uh, his wife, 
and so Dongmin is not going to be related to her, so therefore you can divorce your main character, so Sashe, so Sashe we divorced, uh, and then married uh, Lady Dong, and then we're able to confederate her faction, I think on about turn 10, so then you get Lu Bu and uh, uh, Zhong Liao and all those kind of characters as well. So a great way to sort of manipulate the campaign, then I sold all the territory to, um, to Wan Shu to give him a bit of an early game boost and make him more powerful as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video, if you like this sort of stuff give us a like, give us a subscribe as well and I'll be coming back to you with more sort of interesting exploits and glitches. Thank you, bye.